Hi, this is Dr. Mubayad, and as you know, an essential part to rhinoplasty is bone surgery. And to sculpt the bone, we usually use rasps. To cut the bones, we'll traditionally use osteotomes, and to drill the bones, we can use drills. The problem with these traditional techniques is the soft tissue damage and the lack of precision. And this is why I like to talk about the piezosurgery flex, which is my favorite technique for bone surgery and rhinoplasty. Now, piezosurgery is a technology that uses ultrasonic vibrations that will selectively target the bone and the hard cartilage without damaging the underlying soft tissue. We use it to sculpt, cut, and drill bone, and it's been used in rhinoplasty since 2007, but it's only recently that it's been gaining worldwide attention. Many studies have actually shown benefits to using piezosurgery in rhinoplasty, and these benefits include reduced pain, reduced ecchymosis, reduced edema, reduced mucosal injury, and actually faster bone healing. In my practice, I've also seen other benefits to using this in rhinoplasty, which include decreased irregularities, increased precision, reduced revision rate, and better hemostasis. So here's how we set it up in the operating room. First of all, the piezosurgery machine must be plugged and turned on. Second of all, you have to make sure that the settings for all the inserts are visible. I personally like to create little stickers and stick them directly on the machine for the most commonly used inserts in my practice. There are essentially four components to a piezosurgery operation. The first component is a sterile bag of H2O that is put on the piezosurgery machine by the circulating nurse. The second component is the handpiece that is sterilized and the handpiece connector is given to the circulating nurse that plugs it into the piezosurgery machine. The third component is the sterile tubing that is handed to the circulating nurse and then they can plug the tubing into the H2O bag and the other end of the tubing goes into the handpiece. And finally, the fourth component is the specific insert that you want to use. There are multiple inserts, some sculpt, some cut, some drill bone. Uh, each surgeon has different preferences. I'll usually start with the MP1 insert. So I'll put this one first directly on the handpiece. And it's very important that when putting it on the handpiece, you click only once with the key because clicking in more than once can actually damage the insert. In the next few videos, we're going to be talking about the specific steps of the operation and which insert to use for what, and most importantly, how to use it.